Mina, Kumbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here, back with more Psalm 58, and this time I'm just going to read the entire thing. This is one of the imprecatory psalms. I could probably do a 30-minute message on this, but um, this is not going to be such a 30-minute message. This is going to be me reading this psalm. It'll go by pretty quick because it's not a big one, and just some basic rudimentary commentary by me. So Psalm 58, to the chief musician set to do not destroy, <laughs> sorry, the irony of that, even though I just read the psalm, the irony of that just caught me, <laughs> Mick Tom of David, do you indeed speak righteousness, you silent ones? Do you judge uprightly, you sons of men? No, in heart you work wickedness. You weigh out the violence of your hands in the earth. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they are born, speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf cobra that stops its ear, which will not heed the voice of charmers, charming ever so skillfully. Break their teeth in their mouth, O God. Break out the fangs of the young lions, O Lord. Let them flow away as waters which run continually. When he bends his bow, let his arrows be as if cut in pieces. Let them be like a snail which melts away as it goes, like a stillborn child of a woman, that they may not see the sun. Before their pots can feel the burning thorns, he shall take them away as with a whirlwind. As in his living and burning wrath, the righteous shall rejoice when he sees the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked, so that men will say, Surely there is a reward for the righteous. Surely he is God who judges in the earth. Now that is some, that's some hardcore stuff. Um, and they're not generally, I guess, well understood well, by, I was going to say by non-Christians, not by really Christians either. The long and the short of this passage, it, what I'm going to be taking away from it in the short term, very simply, when you see, and I'm referring specifically to my Christian brothers and sisters here, if you see someone doing something wicked, something evil, something that is definitely wrong, you have the right to pray against them and say, God, stop them from, you know, Whatever it is that they're doing, stop them from lying, stop them from stealing, stop them from their drunkenness, stop them from being physically violent. My gosh, if you see something outrageous as that. And of course, when, when David is referring to the wicked, he's probably referring to people, since he was a king, I'm guessing when he refers to the wicked men, he's referring to people who would literally like come in, invade various towns and villages on the outskirts of Israel, referring to the Gentiles like Goliath who blasphemed God just blatantly and outright. So he was referring to some, well, wicked people. And wicked people, wicked men and women, definitely still exist today. And if you see them, if opportunity affords, you should confront them. And you should pray for their repentance. At the same time, pray that their sin would be stopped, that their wickedness would not continue to rule their lives or rule the lives of those around them, especially if they're in some kind of position of power. Someone who is a liar, a cheater, um, an extorter, those people should not be allowed to remain in power. And it, there are situations where you can do something. There are situations where you can't really do something in both, where you can do something by all means do, and where you can't pray that God would stop that evil in its tracks. And depending on what it is that you see, what it is that you've heard, for example, if you live in such a neighborhood where they're talking about a group of people who are, you know, maybe somewhat, you know, there have been a bunch of rapes or murders in the neighborhood, yes, under circumstances like that, pray that God would kill that person. I'll put it right here online for everyone to hear, for all time, yes, for those kind of people, you pray that God would kill them. No, if someone cuts you off in, the, in, in traffic, you don't pray that God would kill them or nuke their car. Come on. That, that, that's being a bit of a jerk. That's not being criminally and desperately wicked. When you hear something violent and vile going on around you, yes, pray that God would kill those types of people. Don't let wickedness reign under your roof, in your neighborhood, to whatever degree you have authority and can exercise it. And if you're just a common person like me, you can pray. You can defend your home, and you can, well, I'll say in the United States I can defend my home, thank God. There are some places in the world where, even in the first world countries, you can't do that, but you know what you can do? You can pray. And pray for the utmost judgment to fall upon those people, so that you and your loved ones and your family are safe. If they get saved, great. If they refuse. They refuse God's mercy, 
and they refuse whatever chance that he's given them, that he is giving them, then pray for their destruction. It is good. It says at the end of this psalm, the right in verse ten, the righteous shall rejoice when he sees the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. So yeah, with a verse like that, I have no problem saying, pray for the destruction of the wicked, even if it means the actual literal destruction of the wicked. Guys, let me know what you think of the comments down below. Not a lot of Christians talk about stuff like this, and even if they do, they may not quite have my interpretation on it. Maybe I'll get around to doing a thirty-minute message on this. Maybe not. We'll see. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Slightly controversial though it may be. I love you and God bless.